Okay, this is uh, notes on balance. So you're going to want to print this out here or uh, just make your own version of it as we go. Uh, I'm going to go quickly through the balance notes. So um, you may need to pause if you need to write stuff down. So please do that. So um, here we go, getting into balance. Uh, first, we're going to look at a definition of balance. Balance refers to the distribution of visual weight in an artwork. The visual weight is created by the various art elements in the artwork itself. So in art, visual weight are the elements, right? And sometimes things that stand out more are going to carry more visual weight. Some things that don't stand out are not going to carry visual weight. And we're going to explain more of that as we go. So the first term we're going to look at is called formal balance. Formal balance is really easy to see. It's really easy to recognize, right? It's basically when elements on both sides of a central vertical or horizontal line appear to be equal or close to equal. Now, sometimes you might hear the term symmetrical or classical balance. These are also the same as formal balance. Um, it's just sometimes people say them differently. Classical balance is a little more old fashioned, but you're probably for the most part gonna hear formal or symmetrical balance. And there's some examples on the screen here. You can see that draw a line down the middle of all of these pictures. And you basically have the same thing on either side, whether it's exact or really, really close. It's just about the same thing on either side. That's formal balance. Here's some more examples of formal balance, right? Again, think about a vertical line that breaks this in half and you basically have the same thing on either side. So easy to see, uh, easy to recognize, easy to create as well. Okay, now a, uh, a special part of formal balance is something called symmetry. And that's when both sides of a balanced composition are identical. That's you know, like mirror images of each other. And you're gonna see this more in design um, and architecture than you would in say like just regular paintings and drawings and things like that. So symmetry is basically a mirror image on each side, so exactly the same. So it's a very specific kind of formal balance. Another kind of formal balance is called radial balance. And radial balance is basically, think about a circle, and then you have um, elements that radiate out from a central point, and that creates the visual balance. So we can see three examples here. Put a point in the middle and as things go out from the middle it's basically balanced the same types of things um, the same elements as it comes out from the middle so radial balance now there is a term called imbalance okay and that's when a work is unbalanced a work that is unbalanced appears unstable and creates tension and makes the viewer uneasy now, sometimes an artist will deliberately create a work that is unbalanced. Now, it's not that you look at it and go, oh, wow, I feel unbalanced or I feel tension. It's just something that happens in your mind without you really thinking about it. You recognize it, your brain recognizes it, but you don't necessarily like, like oh my gosh, I feel uneasy, but you do recognize it, right? So we look at this image here, it's definitely not in balance, right? It's, un it's imbalance. It's not balanced because of that big black circle on the left. It looks like it's like kind of leaning almost to the left, right? And that, that's what creates those, the uneasy tension. Okay, next, informal balance. Informal balance involves two sides or halves that contain elements that are different, but yet are still in visual balance, okay? So we're talking about a line down the middle of the picture, and we have stuff and things on either side that's different, but still balanced okay so the artist is doing something to help create balance even though the stuff is different on either side so we take a look at the picture on the top here the boat you know if we didn't see that little ship on the far right side it would really seem like the picture was really leaning to the left i mean you got this big ship i'm sorry big boat uh it's even leaning to the left it's very dark compared to the light sky. So a lot going on on the left-hand side. But the artist has given us just a little bit to look at over here on the side just to bring our attention over here to help balance out that picture. Another term for informal balance is asymmetrical balance. Right? So we had symmetrical for formal. We have asymmetrical for informal. 
Okay, so it's the weight of the elements that creates this visual weight. So we're going to look at these. So this is the chart that is just below where you're taking notes. So on the left-hand side, you'll see it says contour and shape. Now, where it's in the box, it says heavier. You're going to write larger, complex, and interesting, right? Those are going to create more visual weight. They're going to be heavier because they're bigger. They're more interesting to look at, right? A lighter visual weight would be a contour or shape that is smaller and more simple, right? So you can see on the left-hand side here, we have this big square on the left. It definitely looks like it outweighs the one on the right, right? Because it's bigger, right? But you could also have something that is more interesting and more complex outweigh something that's simple. So that's how you can create different visual weight, contour, and shape. Next, let's look at color, right? So when it comes to visual weight of color, bright colors and warm colors are going to carry more visual weight. Dull colors and cool colors are going to be lighter or carry less visual weight, okay? You notice bright colors. You notice warm colors more. Because you notice them, they stand out again, and that creates visual weight. Okay, uh, next, let's look at value, right? When it comes to value, it's the most contrast that's going to create the most visual weight, okay? So in this image on the bottom left here, this black bowl has a lot of visual weight because black against white is the highest amount of contrast you can get. It really, really stands out. So it helps to balance out all these other things we have going on over here. And then this funny picture here by Kandinsky, we have this big black dark circle. Without all this other stuff, it would look strange to be really heavy in that corner with all these other stuff here it kind of helps balance out that big dark circle. Okay. And then the least amount of contrast is going to create a, a lighter visual weight. Okay. When it comes to lines, just like everything else, what's going to stand out more? Heavy lines, dark lines, complicated lines, they're going to create more visual weight. What's going to be lighter? Light lines, simple lines, right? So not as complicated, not as interesting. When it comes to texture, you're going to have rough is going to be heavier visual weight and smooth is going to be lighter visual weight. So these are two different boxes here, line, line and texture. Okay, and then last we have position. Position is important because where you place objects has a lot to do with their visual weight, okay? So large objects near the center of a work can be balanced by a small object placed far from the center. So if we take a look at this image on the top here, we have this big group of people. We have these two guys who are, are very, very light colored versus everything else. This is some contrast. They really, really stand out. It's very heavy in this area. The artist has placed this guy over here on the far right to help balance this out, right? So think about when you were a kid on a teeter-totter. I know they don't really have those in playgrounds anymore, but maybe they did when you were little. If you had a big kid on the far side and a little kid on the other far side, the big kid would weigh it down. But if they got closer to the middle, which is the fulcrum, they got close to the middle, it would balance out. And that same thing happens visually in pictures like this. So imagine, see, so you got these two big boxers here, right? Kind of middle left. And then the artist has placed this guy here on the far right to help balance out that image. Okay, take a look at this, right? This is a very famous piece. Van Gogh's Starry Night. Imagine this piece was, say, without the uh, big yellow moon here, right? If that wasn't there, it would be super heavy over here, but our attention's drawn over here because of this bright yellow moon. And then what about this image? This is kind of weird, right? We got this artist painting this picture of a bird, middle right. But he is looking over here, and our attention is drawn to the, even though it's simple, and even though it's not necessarily creating a lot of contrast, because he's looking at it, our attention's drawn over here. And that alone helps to create some balance in that image. Okay, that's it for your notes. Go ahead and, and uh, submit that and move on to your uh, assignments.